premium bonds can be a great option if you're looking at savings products. I'm not the only person who thinks so either. With over 24 million people holding premium bonds, they're now the most popular savings product in the UK. Last year I made a video where I looked at how much I made from holding £50,000 worth of premium bonds. Obviously some time has passed since then, so I thought it was time to give you guys an update. I have made some premium bonds content since then, so if you've missed that, or you don't want to miss any future content, then please consider subscribing. Thanks. During the time period we'll be looking at in this video, the economy started to recover from the pandemic of 2020. The price rate started to slowly increase in line with the stabilising economy. Now if you're not sure what the price rate is, then stick about for this next section. I'll try and show my winnings in the clearest way possible, so hopefully you can see if the increasing price rate made a significant difference to my winnings or not. As some of you may be completely new to the product, I'll explain quickly now the basics of how they work. I'll add chapters to this video though, so if you're pretty clued up on them already, then feel free to skip this part of the video. So what are premium bonds? They're a government-backed savings product provided by NS&I. Being government-backed means they're one of the safest places to put your savings. Although to be fair, most UK savings products are backed by the FSCS protection scheme. They're not really comparable to anything else on the market though. The easiest comparison that a lot of people make for premium bonds is that each bond is like buying a lottery ticket. Unfortunately, you can't get a refund if you don't win on the lotto, but unlike with a lottery ticket, you can withdraw the pound spent on the bond at any time. Unfortunately, it does take a few days to be refunded, so beware that you won't be able to access your funds instantly should you need them. So if you choose to buy premium bonds, for every pound's worth you buy, each of those pounds will be assigned a unique number. Think of it like a car's registration plate. Every month all those numbers get added to a prize draw and if you're lucky enough to win one of the prizes, you can choose to have it sent to your current account or it can be added to your premium bond savings pot, meaning you hold more premium bonds, which means your chances of winning in the future are increased. You can't hold more than £50,000 in premium bonds though, so if you hold the full amount then your only option will be to have the prizes sent to your linked current account. The prizes for premium bonds range from £25 all the way up to £1 million. Each bond has a chance of winning, so you could win multiple prizes from each draw. The amount of prizes on offer goes down as the prize amount increases. This varies month to month, but there are two top prizes of £1 million up for grabs, and the lower prizes are worked out from a percentage of the total amounts of the bonds in the draw. This is what the prize rate refers to. Prizes are also tax-free as well, as a bit of an added bonus. Nice. So those are the things that draw a lot of people into premium bonds. There are some downsides though. The main thing is inflation. We've seen very high inflation of late, which has eroded the value of all our money. I'm sure you've all noticed your money doesn't go as far as it used to. I still have PTSD from being charged £7.50 for an ice cream from an ice cream van recently. Should you choose to put your money into premium bonds rather than Mr Whippy's pension pot, that money will be sitting in its own little world. And if you don't win any prizes, then that money might as well be in a coma. All the while, the world outside is moving on and inflation is eroding your comatose money day by day. So when you choose to withdraw it, although the amount will be the same, it will be worth a lot less as prices for things have risen while it's been locked away. You could say the same with most savings products, but as these normally pay interest, the effects aren't so drastic. The other thing worth mentioning is that this is a numbers game. The more bonds you hold, and for the longest amount of time, the more chance you have of winning a prize. Of course, as this is all random, you could win the top prize of a million pound with just one bond. You could invest 50,000 and see no winnings at all, but generally speaking, the more you have and for longer, the more chance you have of winning. With that to think about, let's see how I got on with a full 50,000 pounds invested for 12 months. March of this year was the last month where I held the full allocation of £50,000. Inflation was soaring and I've wanted to get back in the property game for a while and March finally saw that dream realised. If you haven't already seen it, then check out the absolute grot pit of a property that I bought. I'll show my earnings on the chart with bars and then we'll take a look at the prize rate after once we see what I've earned. Yes, the top prize is a million pounds, but for your sake, I will cap the chart to a more realistic number Otherwise, unless you have a 7,000 inch screen, you won't be seeing much. If I win more than £200, then I'll change the graph. It gives us a good target though. 
will start from April 2022. In April, I won £25. That is the lowest prize you can possibly win with premium bonds. I might have to change the graph again if this carries on. In May, I won nothing. It took a whole month, but once my tears had dried up, I was able to open up the following month's draw results. In June, I won the lowest possible prize again, another £25. This is not off to a good start. Three months in and a 50k investment has only netted me 50 quid so far. That barely even covered the cost of the tissues to mop up my tears from the month before. Let's see if things got any better. On to July, where I finally got a better win, £75. Now this sounds decent, but if you work out the equivalent interest rate, it would only be the same as having that £50,000 in a savings account that has an interest rate of only 1.8%. Now at the time, this wasn't horrific, but now savings rates have shot up, that doesn't seem so appealing. In August, I won £25, the lowest prize again. September was a repeat of August, with another £25 being won. For context, a £25 win is the equivalent of £50,000 being in a savings account with an interest rate of just 0.6%. With a few dismal consecutive months, I had high hopes for October. Unfortunately, the prize draw gods had other ideas, so in October I won nothing. Surely then, November would be a better month. It was, but only slightly. In November, I won £25. Looking back over the last four months, seeing just £75 being paid out to me on a 50 grand lump sum frankly felt insulting. I had a large sum of cash savings elsewhere that were seeing really decent returns as the savings rate at the time was slowly starting to increase. I was getting around a 2.5% return there in November, but my premium bonds were seriously struggling to get above a 1% return. And on a large lump sum like I held with them, that meant I was missing out on around £60 a month in loss of interest. The prize draw gods obviously heard my despair, or it may have been all the goats I sacrificed in the local park, but in the December prize draw I received £100. A much better result, but that's still only an equivalent interest rate of 2.4%. The cash did go some way to cover my legal fees though. Sorry goats. In January of 2023 the prize rate increased significantly to 3%, and continued to do so over the next few months. Ennis and I hiked the rate to 3.15% in February, and 3.3% in March, so let's see how that impacted my winnings. So in January of 2023, I won £75. Not bad, but that's still only an equivalent interest rate of 1.8%. February saw my biggest win though, with a pretty decent £175. Now that's the same return as having that £50,000 in a savings account with an interest rate of 4.2%. With the premium bond prize rate increasing so rapidly, I had pretty high hopes for March. Unfortunately though, I left March's prize draw empty handed, and that was how I parted my journey holding the full allocation of £50,000 worth of premium bonds. As you can see from the graph, it was a pretty up and down journey. I'll add this line graph now that shows the prize rate against my winnings. I think it does show that with a higher rate that you are in for a better chance of winning the bigger prizes. Unfortunately, I had to pull the majority of my money out to fund bigger, filthier things, just as things started to get spicy. Spicy. I did leave a fair chunk in there. I think we'll take a look at that at another time though. All of this does leave a few questions. Was this the best place for my money at the time? Well, to be honest, I think it was. Like I said, I had savings elsewhere. They were getting to the point where I'd be paying a fairly chunky tax bill on the interest. So I figured I had nothing to lose with premium bonds. Inflation at the time was still fairly low. I could have won big. I know some of you guys have, as I've seen the comments some of you guys have written on past videos. You can see there's always the chance of that. Unfortunately, that just didn't happen to me. I've also had people suggest that my money would have been better in a stocks and shares ISA. Well, I also hold one of those and do monthly videos where we see how my investments have got on during the previous month. And during that time period that we've looked at today, the markets were volatile to say the least. I didn't want to risk losing my capital. As I always say, don't invest what you aren't prepared to lose. And that is where premium bonds are great. For the smaller savers, I would personally say don't bother. If I was in that position, and I have been before, 
I'd be saving my cash in the highest paying savings accounts and get myself into a better financial position before risking not growing my savings pot. I hope you guys have had much better luck than me with premium bonds. Let me know down below how you've got on. I always love to see it and it helps other people watching get a clearer picture. If you haven't already, then please consider subscribing for future content. Stay safe out there. Peace.